So we've been talking a lot in this conference about how to improve education. But I'd like to zoom out a bit for a moment and talk not just about improving the current education system, but trying to get people to start thinking about a new education paradigm. And to start this, we need to start with why we're in an education crisis in Israel and everywhere, a global education crisis. So the best way to see this is what I call the great mismatch. And I think everyone knows this, and that is that when people graduate from college or university, millions of people all over the world, whether it's in the United States, here, China, they are having trouble finding jobs. It used to be that a university degree pretty much guaranteed a job. Now it doesn't guarantee anything. It, it may be the minimum or maybe it won't. it's not even the minimum. And at the same time, many companies can't find the people they're looking for. How can there be so, how can there be so many graduates and they can't find the people they're looking for to fill jobs? And this shows that there's a complete gap, a mismatch between what the education is producing and what we need for life, not just for a job. It's not just about technical or vocational education. It's about life. So what can we do about this? And you could see that this is the extreme version of what's happening now is that even Google is not requiring a university degree that big companies like Google are saying to themselves, if I can't really find what I'm looking for among uni university graduates, why am I even requiring it? And, and if I do require it, I'm cutting out all these millions of people who don't have a degree, who may be better for the job that I'm looking for. So this really is a dramatic uh, illustration of the, the wall we're up against with education and why we need a new paradigm. So, and I'm borrowing this kind of slide from uh, Yaakov Hecht, the great Israeli educator that you're gonna learn from tomorrow. And he shows this little illustration that I think is very powerful. That little square is what we are trying to convey with our education systems today. The body of knowledge that if we do a great job, we're conveying to our students, including university education, and everyone knows that that, and that little box is not nearly, it's, it's a small fraction of the amount of knowledge in the world today. So kind of who are we kidding? Uh, even if you study mathematics or you, or you study science or literature or whatever, and even if you have a university degree, it's a small fraction of what exists in that field and there are many fields that we don't study at all. So we have a problem with what education is trying to do, which is to deliver knowledge. Then we have another problem. Here's our problem with the whole purpose of education, which is to deliver knowledge, and that is uh, Andres, what Andre Schleicher says. He's this sometimes called the education minister of Europe. The world economy doesn't hire you for what you know, because Google knows everything. The world economy hires you for what you can do with what you know. And this concept of what you can do with what you know is really another expression of this gap because these companies uh, cannot find people that have the skills to do things with what they know. So what are those skills? What I'm saying is that knowledge is no longer enough. We need lots of other things. We, we need what's called 21st century skills, soft skills. All these names are inadequate because you know, what is curiosity a skill? You know, not really, the, the, these, we don't even have the words, but we know what we need. We need emotional intelligence, strategic thinking, decision making, curiosity of course, communication, and our education systems are just not designed to deal with this. They're not optimized. We don't take tests on any of these things. Our tests are about knowledge. And if you don't measure something, you're not gonna get it. We know that. So. How did Israel deal with this problem? And the fact is, we didn't know what we were doing, but we managed to deal with it. 
We have this problem, I would say, less than other countries, not because we've changed our education system, but because we're getting these skills like strategic thinking, decision making, uh, let's call it mission orientation, how to get things done with what you know. We're actually getting in what I call this leadership track outside the education system, beginning with scouting, going through these gap year programs called Mechinot, and ending up in the army where people really get challenged uh, in a real job and they keep overcoming those challenges again and again. They have to solve problems, they have to communicate, they have to do real things and they come out of that, out of that experience with an ability to get things done. And this is a big part of why we're Startup Nation. And I think what this tells us is in some ways the answer to the education problem is how can we bottle up what Israelis are getting outside of education and put it in the education system? Because the army is not the right way to do this. We don't want to do it ourselves that way and it certainly wouldn't work anywhere else. So I want to talk, just mention a couple things that I'm excited about. Now the first one is an old idea and this is uh, Yaakov Hecht's book about democratic education. He's one of the absolute global leaders in this field. I think this is an old idea, you know, beginning with the Summerhill School about a century ago, but I think it's an idea whose time has come because when you let kids pick what they want to learn and how to learn it, for, just for beginners, you're not killing curiosity. You're building curiosity. You're building the ability to learn how to learn. You're building self-motivation. You're building problem solving. You're building lots of things that we tend to kill in our current education system. Uh, so I think democratic education is something that grow, will grow, is growing, and I think is an example of the kind of reinvented education we're talking about. And I want to mention something else. This you probably not have heard of, I have not heard of yet. A professor from MIT, her name is Christine Ortiz, has left MIT and is starting a project-based university. To me, this is so radical, so amazing. As it says here, this headline, no majors, no lectures, no classrooms, also no subjects, also not really any line between graduate and undergraduate. And so she's, I think, building the university of the future, uh, which without a lot of these arbitrary divisions that have become outdated, certainly, the, the lecture uh, is not the way to learn anymore. And so, you know, not having classrooms, not having lectures is an amazing thing. Also in Finland, they're talking about getting rid of subjects. Uh, all of this is going in the right direction. And I think this is revolutionary and could change all of education because if we change the university, then we, it forces K through 12 to change. Because basically our K through 12 system is designed to produce the kids that will be able to get into university. It's aimed at university. So once you change the university into something very different, that's not just about knowledge, that's about how to solve problems, how to learn, uh, it's not just a body of knowledge, then that could change the whole system going downward. So I think this actually has tremendous implications for ed tech, for how we think about ed tech. Because right now, most of ed tech, understandably, is designed to improve the current system. I mean, there's some, who are you gonna sell to? You sell to the education system. So it's gotta be something that plugs in to the existing education system. But I think there's a whole industry waiting to be built. The most exciting, the most, the largest companies that are going to be the next, you know, Googles or Facebooks of education, are not going to be the ones that produce a better classroom, or just, or even gather data from the classroom. Uh, a lot of the things we've been talking about here, which is all great stuff, but it's not the next big thing, and we need to build companies that are actually building the next big thing because it's not going to be the education system that produces this. It's going to be produced from outside and the education system will be dragged, kicking and screaming along behind. Uh, so 
uh, I believe that the next great education companies are going to be how people get what they're missing from the educa education system. They're going to find ways to teach people strategic thinking, decision making, emotional intelligence, all these things. And in fact, it's not even teaching. It's a matter of letting them experience that, Let them, letting them do that. Uh, I think this is the industry that's missing, and I hope that the ed tech world in Israel and everywhere else starts thinking in this direction, because I really believe this is an entire industry waiting to be built. Thank you. <laughs>